Is the 9800X3D worth the upgrade from the 7800X3D? Today I'm testing performance in Avowed, Rainbow Six Siege, War Thunder, Pal World, and Naraka Blade Point in 1080, 1440, and 4K to help you decide. Let's get into it. To test these two powerhouse gaming CPUs, I'm using an Aorus X670E Extreme motherboard paired with 64GB of SK Hynix ADI DDR5 at 6000CL30 with Titan secondary and tertiary timings. I maxed out the PBO settings as much as I could for both CPUs. On the 9800X3D, I've applied a plus 200MHz boost clock override with a minus 40CO value on the undervolt. If you want to see my full tuning process on the 98, check out the video linked in the upper right hand corner. The 7800X3D is running a minus 30CO under. For these tests, I'm using an RTX 4070. If you're looking for more specific details on the full system configuration, check the video description below. So first up is Avowed, a brand new first person fantasy RPG that released this week. Since it features some pretty demanding visuals, I tested it on the low graphics preset with DLSS balance to reduce GPU load. I used the first boss fight against Stedman Ralki for this comparison. In 1080, the 9800X3D saw a small 5.4% increase in average FPS with 5.8% higher 1% lows and 2.7% higher 0.1% lows. In actual gameplay, the difference was minimal and both CPUs felt nearly identical. At 1440, the 9800X3D had a 4% boost in average FPS, but the gains were in the 1% lows at 18% and 0.1% lows at 10%, making the game feel noticeably smoother. In 4K, the average FPS was 8% higher with a 2% increase in 1% lows and 13% uplift in 0.1% lows. While the overall FPS difference wasn't huge, the improved frame pacing on the 9800X3D made gameplay feel a bit smoother. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege. Since this game isn't very demanding on the GPU side, I tested it at native resolution using the lowest graphics preset. For consistency, I ran these comparisons in the shooting range using the last booth with moving target drills. Funny enough, I didn't realize the game had a built-in benchmark until after I finished all my testing. So if I do test it again in the future, I'll probably use the benchmark, but for this one, I'm in the shooting range. In 1080, the 9800X3D saw a 5.5% boost in average FPS, with 10% higher 1% lows and a 22% uplift in 0.1% lows. While these numbers are solid, the FPS is already so high that in actual gameplay, the difference was barely noticeable. At 1440, the 9800X3D had a 6% increase in average FPS and 20 to 30% gains in the lows. But again, with frame rates sitting around 400 FPS, the real world difference was minimal. In 4K, the 9800X3D showed 10 to 20% gains across the board. But again, since the FPS remained extremely high, even at this resolution, the difference in actual gameplay feel was negligible. Moving on to the next title, we have War Thunder. For this test, I used the Tank Battle CPU benchmark and ran the game at native resolution on the low graphics preset. In 1080, the average FPS was nearly identical between both CPUs, the 9800X3D showing a 13% improvement in 1% lows and a 7% gain in 0.1% lows. In 1440, the 9800X3D again pulled ahead with a 9% increase in average FPS, 24% boost in 1% lows, and a 13% uplift in 0.1% lows, making it look a bit smoother. In 4K, the differences were minimal with all the metrics falling within single digit percentage gains. Up next is Pal World. Since it was easy for me to hit the 240 FPS cap with DLSS, I ran these tests at native resolution to better highlight CPU performance differences. Testing was done along a set route near the initial spawn in a newly created world. In 1080, the average FPS was pretty much identical with the 9800X3D showing a small 3% uplift in 1% lows and a 14% gain in 0.1% lows. At 1440, the performance remained very close with only a 2-4% difference across all metrics. In 4K, the gap closed even further with no measurable difference in 0.1% lows. Overall, both CPUs performed very well in this title. Lastly, we have Naraka Blade Point. I tested this title using the lowest graphics preset in training mode for a consistent comparison. In 1080, the average FPS and 1% lows were nearly identical between the two CPUs, but the 9800X3D had a significant 30% uplift in 0.1% lows, make the gameplay feel much smoother. At 1440, the 9800X3D showed a 10% increase in both average FPS and 1% lows, with an 18% gain in 0.1% lows. Surprisingly, at 4K, the largest differences appeared with the 9800X3D delivering 15-20% to higher performance across the board. So here are the overall numbers. Since I lowered the graphics settings for these tests, the CPU is doing most of the heavy lifting here. Even at 1080p, the difference in average FPS between the 9800X3D and the 7800X3D wasn't too drastic. The biggest improvement was in frame pacing, making gameplay feel a bit smoother, but at such high frame rates, the difference was hard to notice in actual gameplay. At 4 
1440 and 4K, the FPS gap widened more than I expected. Typically, you'd see the biggest differences at lower resolutions and smaller ones at higher resolutions as the GPU starts to play more of a part. But in these tests, the 9800X 3D consistently pulled ahead as the resolution increased. The one constant across all resolutions was better frame pacing on the 9800X 3D with fewer micro stutters. So after all this, is it worth upgrading? from a 78 to a 98? At retail price, yes, absolutely. The 7800X 3D retails for $449, while the 9800X 3D is priced at $479. For only $30 more, you get better lows and smoother gameplay. But the problem is PC hardware availability is at an all-time low right now, it seems like, and pricing is maybe not at an all-time high, but things are definitely inflated across the board. At current street prices, the 7800X 3D becomes a better value, especially if you can find it around $400 or less. And this is just my personal speculation, so take it with a grain of salt, but I wouldn't be surprised if the 7800X 3D drops in price or AMD releases a cheaper 7700X 3D variant in the near future. And realistically, the 9800X 3D is usually around 550 to 570 right now, unless you have a micro center near you and you are checking stock daily or just get lucky and snag one online when the restocks come online for like a couple seconds before the bots take them all up. So is the 9800X 3D worth $150 more than the 78? Probably not for most people, but if you can find it at retail or have the budget for it, it's definitely the better CPU. Whether it's worth it or not is going to be up to you, but I hope this video helped make the difference clearer for you. And that's all I got for this one. Like I said, I hope it was helpful. If you got something out of this video, please drop a like and subscribe for more hardware content like this because it really helps the channel out and I'd be very grateful. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.